So what do you think the reasons are that the prices of games have exploded? I already mentioned, you know, some collusion between Hot WADA and Heritage Auctions, which, you know, again, you can take that for what it is. My opinion is they are clearly colluding together. What do you think, though, are some other reasons that prices have risen to this level over the past few years? COVID. I, I really want to say the pandemic. That's definitely a big part of it. Huge, huge, because collectors were always around. You know, the casual gamer was always around. You know, uh, we weren't able to open a second location, you know, without the games because it's what we do. Once the pandemic hit, we couldn't keep retro games, retro consoles in stock at all. It was unbelievable. I know people, that it's true. People were stuck in the house. They had, you know, the government was paying them exorbitant amounts of money for unemployment. You know, so they had a lot of people had disposable income and that was a good time to pick up another hobby. The, the comic books, uh, video games, but it was people had money to spend and they I'm gonna, were spending it. I'm going to give you two examples of why I know that's true. First example is there's different retro game stores in Southern California that I frequent and I went into one, you know, after they like, you know, they reopened to like, you know, he had to wear a mask and, you know, all, all that good stuff in, it must've been in 2020. I walked in there mm -hmm. and it was like, there was, I don't even know that I bought anything that day. There was like nothing in the store. It was ridiculous. So that, that was example number one for me. I knew that wasn't just there. It was all over the place. Number two is this during that time, the Wii console was as close to garbage as you could possibly get with being a video game system. That, that console, you couldn't give away before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, it went from, you know, we, you know, GameStop, when I worked there, we had a bunch of Wii's in the back, sold all of them at Christmas of, uh, you know, 20, what, what did the, when the pandemic, the pandemic started in 2020. So this was like 2019, mm -hmm. right? We sold whatever Wii's we had left. We stopped taking them in. So we weren't going to get restocked. Dude, if we had kept all those Wii's for one year yeah. and 2020 hit with the pandemic, mm -hmm. I could have sold a hundred Wii's in, in like three days yeah. for like, for, for at least $70 a piece. Yep. When we didn't even take them because we were only, at one point we were giving people $5 for the re and we were reselling them for like 15 or 20 or something. Like they were, they were useless. And then everybody wanted a Wii once the lockdown happened. Mm -hmm. It yep. was nuts. It was, it was, I've never seen anything like it never seen anything like it it was uh, again but that's when the that's when people started to to find that extra hobby that's when they started collecting and getting into into you know whatever whatever hobby you know nfts retro games comic books whatever it was unbelievable man yeah and, and some of those people haven't left i think some of them did you know you know as as things open back up a lot of them you know did return back to the normal life and got rid of whatever game systems they picked up and whatever games. But I think a lot of people stuck around still, you know, I, I don't have. see, I don't see inventory levels the same since before the pandemic, at least not now. No, it's, it's not the same. It's not the same because a lot of people are holding on to that stuff. If, you know, if they're not holding on to it for themselves, to build their collection, they're posting it on eBay because they you know, they see the prices for this stuff and they're like, hey, I can make a quick dollar. Let Dude, Wii's are like 70, 70 to $100 mm -hmm. right now. Yep. When they were yep. like used, like literally nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we can't keep a GameCube game in stock at all. At I all. mean, first of all, GameCube's great, but... <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's crazy. It's crazy, crazy, man. The GameCube stuff makes a lot of sense to me because an another common theme with retro gaming is it goes generationally. So NES was really big first. Then it was Super Nintendo. You know, N64 was huge. It's still, N64 is still pretty popular. But now we're up to like the PS2 GameCube era 
where those games are getting really pumped up. Poor Xbox, no one cares still. Some For some reason, no one cares about Xbox. We love you, Xbox. <laughs> we do. <laughs> but GameCube and PS2 games have gone way up in value. Probably over the past three years, I would say. Somewhere around there, maybe four. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, would, I would say. And then there's those standout titles that just skyrocketed. I mean, so if you can if you can go generationally, well, what came out after the GameCube? The Wii. The Wii. So all those people that have Wii games, once those kids get a little older, which is coming up soon, everybody's going to want their Wii again. That's what's going to happen, as weird as it sounds. Like, it still sounds weird to me. <laughs> it does. It sounds bizarre. Like, oh, man, we're going to be nostalgic for the Wii. Some people are, I guess, but, but history shows that that's what should be next. That whole generation, you know, we Xbox 360 and PS3 should be the next. If you want to get in, there's your door. Go after those games right now. Cause in five to 10 years, that's going to be what everybody wants. Maybe even sooner. Cause, cause GameCube's already been there for what, three or four years now. Yeah. yeah. GameCube's. I still can't keep a GameCube in stock. I bet you, uh within three to four years everybody's looking for a Wii because the, the that generation of kids has grown up they have a little mm -hmm. bit of money and they want to rebuy their childhood yep so get if you guys want to get in if you guys want to start collecting now or if you want to start investing go ahead and get pick up yourself some Wii 360 and ps3 games that's my recommendation to you yeah we get we get people coming in looking for 360s um often often um and they sell pretty well as long as we have a good a good stock of games uh 360 sell pretty well i mean p to be truthful ps3 did out outsell p xbox 360 in that generation at the very end but by that point nobody cared that was 360 that was xbox's generation people are going to be nostalgic more for the xbox 360 than the ps3 yeah, yeah. um so some other things i think that you know, increased uh, the prices of retro games. Uh, YouTube had a huge, huge thing to do with this back in like the early days of YouTube, like the angry video game nerd mm -hmm. and, you know, tons of like, you know, collectors out there. YouTube was highly important to people caring about video games again. But this came from a natural like place. This came from the collectors. This came from the people who were passionate about it. And then it just kind of spread like wildfire throughout YouTube and everybody wants to collect games now. Yeah, they, they do. And if you, if you search some, some video game, you know, on YouTube, you know, you'll, I'm sure you will pop up with a, a video that talks about the rise in prices or a good game to invest in. It, it, it's, you can't, you can't get away from it. It's all over the place. It's all over the place. Because everybody is, that's the mindset. That's really the mindset now. It's all about investing and speculating and, and making the money. It's like, where's the love, man? Where's the love? Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so another thing that's going to be affecting the market, let's say, like, so we're, so we're talking about investing and collecting. This has already been affecting the market. It's going to continue to affect the market. And that is the rise of digital games talk to me about digital games Wes what are your thoughts what are your opinions what are your feelings about the digital okay future? I just let out a, a big sigh man because I, I, I'm not a fan of digital wait let me ask you a question okay digital period like full stop or just for video games full stop I just I music just, okay music's different music's okay. different um All right. I'm, I'm not a fan of digital games unless I have to. Uh, I'm not a fan of digital comic books or, or eBooks um, on the, on the collector side of things. It's not a digital holds no value for me. Um, as, what about as a, movies? I mean, we stream. I, I don't remember the last time I bought a, a Blu-ray, you know, so that, that an aspect, yes. But as far as a purchase, to own, I just, I, I have to have that satisfaction of buying something and holding it in my hand. 
All right, let me ask you another question. Why is it okay to not have a CD in your hand? But or why is it why is it okay to not have a CD in your hand? But it's not okay. If it's a game. I guess because it goes back to digital hold for me holds no value. Uh, a digital comic book will never go up in value. But if I physically have a comic book in my hand, that same comic, that the paper will in turn over time be worth something. Digital to me will never be worth anything. And as far as the games, it's, I, I feel the games are the same way. No, I feel you. So th this is the difference. Like you're not buying these, you, you are buying these because it's, it's a passion. That's Correct. why you're buying them. But you also know that physically they're worth something and digitally they worth nothing. Correct. You can't give them to somebody else to use. Granted, you could probably turn on like a PS3 and like play your old downloaded PS3 games on it or something. If you can still sign in, if it still pings the servers, if it still knows that you bought those games, which is my biggest problem with it. Um, but that, no, I understand. I, I wanted to ask you that question because it's not an easy question to answer, but I understand because I'm the same way as you. Like I've get, I was a huge, I'm still, I'm a huge fan of music. I love music, but I have everything on Spotify now. Like I went from buying, I went from dreaming when I was a kid, like I'm going to own my own record studio. Like I'm going to be able to record, not record, recording studio. I'm going to be able to record in there. I'm going to have walls of CDs, Wes. Just walls of like the greatest <laughs> CDs surrounding me. And then I got to college and it was like, oh, I'm going to have a computer with iTunes. That's what I'm going to have. <laughs> and then I get to college and like, wow, I'm going to have Spotify and I'm not going to have anything else for the rest of my life. And I'm going to consistently pay somebody $10 a month. So I have unlimited access to just about every song that's ever existed. They, they, they convenienced me to death is what they did. And I think they're going to do the same thing with games. However, I couldn't verbally explain to you how against I, that I am. Like, I don't, I know it sounds nuts. I know it sounds like I'm a crazy person when I say this, but I will fight till the bitter end to continue buying physical copies of games. I, I, I agree. And, and I'm not a, a hundred percent opposed to digital. Uh, there's some I'm things a hundred percent opposed to. It. Correct. There's some things like for music, uh, you know, new cars don't come with CD players anymore. Mm -hmm. And I got tons of CDs. So I'm forced to go digital so I can carry them on my phone and listen to them in my car. Uh, but, you know, as far as the digital games, yeah, there's some things that, you know, we have to get digital. Like, right, if they only release digitally, you're going to buy the digital copy if that's something you want. Cuphead, when it came out, it was only Cuphead. digital. Cuphead. Love Cuphead. Digital. I had to buy it, wanted it, not a problem. You know, not looking for it to go up in value or what have you. I just wanted the game. But with that being said, with the rise and popularity of digital, less physical copies are going to be produced, which yeah. are going to make physical games scarce at some point. That's very true. Let me throw a couple stats at you that I pulled up for this. You actually haven't seen this because I edited the doc before you got here, but this was from uh, 2020. So this is a, a, um, a tweet from Daniel Ahmad, who is a uh, analyst, essentially. Uh, he posts uh, out on Twitter, different information all the time. This is what he said back in 2020. EA said that 52% of its consoles, uh, console full game unit sales in the past 12 months were via digital download. For reference, Take Two says its ratio was 55% for fiscal year 2020. Sony said that 51% of all games sold on PS4 in fiscal year 2020 were digital. In other words, as we enter the next generation, we are over a 50% threshold for digital. That's freaking nuts. And this That's was crazy. a year ago. That's now, crazy. The, the pandemic definitely played a part in increasing that very mm -hmm. quickly because people didn't have to go to the store. They can just download a game. Yep. But I don't think that that trend is going to reverse. I, I tried to look up some statistics for 2021 
I don't know if they haven't released them yet or they just haven't talked about them, but I was not able to locate any digital sales for 2021 just yet, at least for a fiscal year. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, I was having a conversation with someone about uh, GameStop and he was like, well, what do you think is going to happen with GameStop? And it, it was, it was like the whole, who knows how long GameStop is going to last because with the rise of digital games, you won't need a box store to buy your games anymore. You really won't. I mean, they'll exist as a website for a while, I think, especially if exactly. they have a, I don't know if he became the CEO, if he's just still on the board, but the guy who made like Chewy.com, which is like a website where you get stuff for your dogs. For, your, for the pets, yeah. He's either in charge at GameStop. He's either the CEO or he's a board member. Don't quote me because I have no idea which one he is. Mm -hmm. When I left there, he was a board member and he was pushing super hard for the company to move to online sales, mm -hmm. which is probably still happening. Like, it's going to be sad the day that those stores go away, in, in my opinion. Like, I know a lot of people aren't crazy about GameStop or whatever, but not having a local store that I can walk into anymore, because where I live, there are no retro stores. I have to drive uh, at least at least an hour away to get to a retro store. Wes, one last thing I want to mention about digital sales is who do you think of, out of the big three, who, who do you think of least when it comes to digital sales, if you hear that? Nintendo? Yes. So one more point to uh, drive, one more thing to drive my point home. In 2020, digital sales made up 40.9% of total software sales for Nintendo. Nintendo. It's crazy. They don't even know how to run an online anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But no, again, the, digi the digital, because of the rise in popularity of digital, Physical copies become more scarce, which drive the prices up. So if you are an investor, you know, now's a good time because, you know, that game that you just bought now, it's probably going to disappear soon. Yeah. That's that I got from Logan Plant over at IGN, just so you guys know.